successful investors of all times who has spent billions of his dollars to promote democracy around the world to promote what he calls open societies he was a big supporter of then senator obama in the 2008 elections he has been relatively quiet on that subject in recent months so who better to talk about the democracy movements in the middle east north africa about u.s politics the president's new budget and much more welcome back george my pleasure do you think what is going on in in the arab world right now uh, reminds you of uh, 1989 when you were very active in helping those countries move to freedom it, it is very similar it's it's a historic event at least equal in importance to what happened then uh, and it, it really is a spontaneous desire of people living in close societies to shake off the dictatorship and and uh, corrupt uh, and uh, regimes and to move towards democracy. Uh, the big difference between 1989 and now is that there it was uh, uh, the Soviet dictatorship that was collapsing. Here it's our allies that, that are um, changing and uh, 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 now we have to actually uh, re regain the, the uh, confidence and the alliance of the people in these countries. In, the, in Eastern Europe, the people were for us because we had opposed those regimes. That's right. Here, we have supported these regimes, so the people look at us at least with some suspicion. Mm. Yeah, but I must say uh, that in this respect, President Obama did a, an outstanding job. It's, it's uh, not sufficiently appreciated. Uh, really, uh, what a big difference it was that he was, he is our president at this time. Uh, just imagine if uh, uh, Bush and Cheney w would have been in charge. I don't think you would have had a peaceful uh, 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 revolution in Egypt. Even though they were for democracy and the Bush talked about the freedom agenda? Yes, it was, but, but in, in effect they were allies of, of uh, uh, these regimes and uh, President Obama sees it in terms of people asserting their right to be more uh, in, in charge of the, of, of, of the government. You say revolutions usually start with enthusiasm but end in tears. That's right. So, and, and there are many cases where these things start off well and then the military reasserts control or there's some kind of total dysfunction. Yeah. Yeah. What are the lessons you've learned about how to, how to make sure that Egypt goes right rather than goes yes. wrong? Well, the, what I learned in 1989 uh, 91, when I got, was very involved there, is that the transition from a closed society uh, to an open society is not an easy one, because uh, it, it's a step up, because uh, uh, there's a lot more involved in democracy uh, than just overthrowing uh, uh, a dictator. You have to build institutions that takes time and actually uh, effort and uh, these countries will need a lot of support for the revolution actually to succeed. In Egypt what people look at is the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, a group that whether or not it's, it's peaceful or not has pretty um, extreme views and views that are often not compatible with an open society well, with a democratic you see, society. This is what I find very heartening because I also uh, sort of uh, uh, accepted this view that uh, it's either uh, Mubarak or uh, the Muslim Brotherhood or, or, or Al-Qaeda. Uh, it turns out that there is, uh, even in Egypt, a sufficiently engaged uh, middle class, particularly young people, uh, who actually want to be democratic and are not uh, beholden to a, an, an Islamic uh, political movement. So uh, uh, it's, uh, the reality actually turns out to be much more promising than I expected. When you look around at the regimes, the other regimes, there seem to be protests and discontent everywhere. Yeah. 
The one that is most interesting is Iran. Of course, and I'm convinced that the, uh, that, uh, the, the regime will not survive. Uh, it was already highly uh, vulnerable because the revolution got further and further extreme. The, the, actually, the mullahs, the uh, Islamic element, uh, was already disenfranchised. And it was just the Revolutionary Guard, and then even within the Revolutionary Guard, an and increasingly narrow group of people who are uh, maintaining themselves in power uh, through real uh, f uh, oppression uh, and despotism, uh, killing people to judicial processes. Uh, and uh, the large majority of people resent them, try to uh, move up, but because uh, they were oppressed, the, the, this uh, movement was uh, repressed. Could we do something to, 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 to um, further these trends? Yeah. In uh, I think Obama did actually there also a very good job by refusing to get involved and to be instigating regime change. Uh, this, this attempt to impose a regime change from the outside is counterproductive because then the regime can accuse the, its opponents as being in the pay of a, of a foreign power. Right? right here, Obama scrupulously avoided it. He was criticized for it uh, that he wasn't uh, 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 pro democracy. Uh, yeah, now. pushing it. Now, I think now he's beginning to uh, uh, push and and uh, and rightly so. And uh, uh, as I said, the situation there could get very very ugly. I think that the, op the opposition leaders could easily be uh, uh, killed uh, through a false judicial process because the regime is fighting for its survival, because they know that they have committed such crimes that it's either them or the people. So they will put up a lot more resistance. Uh, but I don't think that they'll be able to succeed because this is something that uh, people behave in, uh, very differently than in normal times. They actually are willing to sacrifice their lives for a common cause. So it's uh, and the the impossible, what seems to be impossible, not not only becomes possible, but it actually happens. So uh, I, I I would like to bet that uh, uh, the Iranian regime will not be there in a year's time. Wow. If the Iranian regime collapses, uh, this will be a, a, a real revolution in the Middle East. I mean, you're, you are imagining a period of great instability. Yes. Well, look, in, in the 1991, the Soviet Union collapsed. It was a major change in geopolitics. Uh, the least you can expect for, is for Iran to collapse in this one, for it to be equally significant. In other words, this game of geopolitics is not t totally fixed, it, because what goes on inside states has a lot of influence on how those states behave. Uh, so Iran, I think, uh, will uh, in, almost inevitably uh, change its, its character and that will change the landscape when we come back more with George Soros we're going to